Hello there, it's Simone. I'm here with a new pen day video. Today I want to look at this Pilot Kakuno um, with a fine nib. This is the Papa edition. It's a special edition. There's a whole family um, and I was gifted the Papa pen by my friend Amy for Christmas and I haven't opened it yet because I haven't had the chance to ink it up but for my March currently inked for my March lineup I want to use this pen and so it is time to open it up I actually already did because this packaging is very hard to get into and see what it this pen is all about I had previously owned Pilot Kakuno pens I have since sold them because I, at the time that I used them they weren't the best pen for me but I'm curious to see if maybe my fountain pen usage has changed or if it was the ink that I had in those pens um, yeah so it comes in this blister packaging it is a clear transparent translucent body it's not transparent because it's translucent blue it has some facets right here and the cap clips on it's not a screw cap the nib is beautiful it is a dad with a tie and a mustache and the nib is fine this is the regular uh, pilot feed you see the same feed on a Pilot Metropolitan as well. I'll show that to you in a second. It comes with a Pilot Black cartridge. However, my friend Amy was so nice to include a converter. And that's what I'm going to use today because when I chose the inks for this month, I decided that I wanted to use an ink that I had received as a sample as well. Um, I'm going to show that to you in a second, so, but I will be making use of this converter. So this is how, what the pen looks like. Let's compare it to another Pilot beginner fountain pen that is in a similar price range the pilot metropolitan the one that i have here is the pilot metropolitan retro pop red um, this one comes in a calligraphy medium nib but you can see the feed is exactly wow sorry is exactly the same it's also not a screw on cap Let's pull out some other beginner fountain pens. This is a, pil um, a Lamy, Saf Lamy Safari. It's a bit longer. Then a Twisby Eco. It's also longer. So size-wise, we would have the Twisby Eco as the longest, the Lamy Safari as the second. The Metropolitan is almost exactly the same size it looks smaller because because it has rounded tops and then here is the pilot kakuno uh, it actually reminds me of the twisby go i know that the filling mechanism is very different but it doesn't have a clip it's also this one has a roll stop however uh, it's this one is cheaper than this one so i think the price range is very this is also cheapest sorted by price range if i'm not mistaken i think you can get lamy safaris for about 18 dollars if you purchase through amazon and then the twisby eco is about 32 normal price for a lamy safari is about 26 um, then the uh, pilot cocoon um, metropolitan this one I think was 22-ish, this one was 17 or 18, and then this is I think about 12 to 13 dollars. So let's uncap them. 
I'm going to line them up at the section where the nib comes out of the section because that's where you basically hold them so you can see how they compare well this is rolling away let's just put it right next to it so it doesn't and then this one so how much it sticks out of your hand but actually if we look at this they're all basically the same size uncapped um, you can post all of those pens. I would not post the Twisby Go. I can show you why in just a second. I usually don't post any of these pens if I use them. I haven't used the Kakuno long enough to, to have any experience if I wanted to use this um, posted or not. The cap of the go is so is such a thin acrylic that I feel like if you push this in too far you could get very thin cracks and then your cap wouldn't maybe sit on your pen well enough anymore or get cracks and break and that's not what I would want to happen so I would not post this pen and then this this is definitely not as looks not as flimsy as this cap in the thickness and then this posts nicely securely works really well this is how long this is so it's it compares to the Metropolitan is the shortest, then the Kakuno, then the Lamy Safari, and then the Twisby Eco. And you can totally post those. There is a, uh, what is this, O-ring that will actually keep the cap very well firmly on your thing. But we're not talking about the Twisby Eco, we're talking about the Kakuno. So let me move everything else aside. And then we can look at this a bit more. You can remove the feed and nib. And let me check if I can just demonstrate this, not as easily as I had hoped. Uh, if you have some kind of um, tool like a grip, um, silicone grip, you could probably put this in and then you're just really careful not to break anything if you if you hold it like this and then pull it should be be easy to remove if you would use this for maybe shimmer inks or so i think pilot nibs are very especially the fine nibs are very fine that's why i chose an ink that is more or hopefully more lubricated i haven't used it yet but i'll grab the sample real quick i want to ink it up no no color matching this time with Pilot Irojizuku Momiji. Um, I had a really great experience with Pilot Irojizuku Kanpeki in a pen that I hadn't enjoyed in the past. And so my hope is there is a cat that is trying to eat my washi tape. So let me just put this away. Um, in the past, I have not liked a lot the Pilot Vanishing Point. If you want to watch that video where I love that pen just i'll link it in the cards above um, and so my hope is that this ink is also very wet and i will have a really great writing experience with this fine nib so i'll be back i'll ink it up on camera and then we'll work together so i brought out a syringe even though this is a piston filling cart um, converter I might still add some ink depending on how good of a fill I will get oh oh I haven't rinsed this pen yet oh, oh I almost started filling my pen without recording so I have removed the sticker I have a rag I have the ink in the vial and the toothbrush holder from Daiso I have a syringe if I need help filling this converter and then I'm dipping this um, pen 
and nib into the vial. Um, as you can see, I already dipped it and so it started already filling. I haven't turned it or anything yet, but I'm gonna just put it all the way down. I'm gonna dip it in and making sure that it is submerged. And then I'm just going to turn the piston and then we'll see how much ink I was able to fill into the pen. And I think for the beginning, this is definitely enough. Wow, wow. Because I filled it through the nib and feed, it should actually be able, I should actually be able to write with this right away. So we are, I'm go just gonna wipe this off a little bit because that's a lot. And then let me screw this on and then put on the lid. Let me open my ink and pen testing notebook for all the random tests and trials that I need to make. All right, so this is, let's see if it actually writes. Yes, this is the pilot. Kuno with a fine nib. It's the dad. And it does have a section that is triangular. So if you, you, it, it's very, very faint. So it, there is a, a way to hold this pen. I usually hold my fountain pens like this, so it doesn't really affect me. And even if I was going to hold it like this, I still would be able to do that without feeling like it's not going to work. This is a super fine nib, but the, the ink flows nicely. So the ink is Pilot Hiroshi Zuku Momiji. And what I was drawn to this ink was the fact that it looks pink in the beginning, but it dries more red. Like if you look at this, um, it's more pink on this paper. So I am just, I wanted to explore this ink. Let's do uh, this, side strokes, up strokes. I have noticed that many of my pilot pens have a really hard time doing upstrokes and side strokes from right to left, which is really interesting. But the ink eh, flows nicely. The feed can keep up with my demand for now. Yeah. And the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Mm -hmm. I actually really like that. I wasn't sure. I'm, I'm really curious how it, how it works with, with me and my demands for fountain pens. I really, I don't use my fountain pens every single day, or at least not every fountain pen every single day. And especially when I have nine pens inked and I use one, another, a different one every day, then the same pen would be in rotation every nine days. So I'm, I'm curious to see if this works. It has some holes in the top, so I'm not really sure if the, if there is air going into this pen, we'll find out. That's why I'm, I'm really curious. And if you haven't noticed yet, there is a little teeny tiny what is that, notch right here that also prevents this pen from rolling off your table. Um, also, 
because it's faceted, it's not really going anywhere anyway. But let's just look at this nib one more time. Is it wrong way? There. Can you see the, the tie and the mustache from dad? Yeah. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to work out for me. It does have some awesome gold sheen. And with a such a fine nib, I feel like it's it's bearable because reds are definitely something to be a bit mindful about. They're so bright. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see how that was going to work out for me. If you have Kakunos, let me know which nib width you prefer. I am excited to use this in my lineup for March and I hope to see you soon. Until then, bye.